the book of first Corinthians chapter 3 father we are so grateful that again in your mercy you spared us to come together again on this side of eternity Lord uh, we're here because of your divine love and providence we're aware of the fact that each service could well be our last. So grant we'll give the more earnest heed to what we hear and not allow it to slip. Give us that auction. We're depending on you, Lord, this morning. We're depending on you to open our hearts, our mind, our understanding. Give us a sense, Lord God, the gravity of this moment. Have your way. Get good results. Thine own self will not fail the praising because we ask it in Jesus Christ's name and for his sake. Amen. We'll begin reading at verse number one. And I, brethren, could not speak unto you as unto spiritual, but as unto carnal, even as unto babes in Christ. I have fed you with milk and not with meat, for hitherto Ye were not able to bear it, neither yet now are ye able. For ye are yet carnal, for whereas there is among you envying and strife and divisions, are ye not carnal and walk as men? For while one saith, I'm of Paul, and another, I'm of Apollos, are ye not carnal? Who then is Paul, or who is Apollos? but ministers by whom ye believed, even as the Lord gave to every man. I planted, Apollos watered, but God gave the increase. So then neither is he that planteth anything, neither he that watereth, but God that giveth the increase. Now he that planteth and he that watereth are one, and every man shall receive his own reward according to his own labor for we are laborers together with God and our God husbandry Amen. ye are God's building according to the grace of God which is given unto me as a wise master builder I have laid the foundation and another buildeth thereon but let every man take heed how he buildeth thereupon for other foundation can no man lay than is laid, which is Jesus Christ. Amen. Now if any man build upon this foundation gold, silver, precious stone, wood, hay, stubble, every man's work shall be made manifest, for the day shall declare it, because it shall be revealed by fire, and fire shall try every man's work of what sort it is. If any man's work abide, which he hath built thereupon, he shall receive a reward. If any man's work shall be burned, he shall suffer loss, but he himself shall be saved, yet so as by fire. Our thought this morning is usable material. I usually listen in the devotional part of a service and see if there's a confirmation to what I am to speak about. And they sing this song without spot and blameless and about the church divine and on. And it was a direct confirmation as to what the Lord had given me for this hour. Amen. Amen. We want to talk to you about usable material. The apostle in the third chapter of Corinthians was talking about God's building, the work of God, building the work of God, a church of God. And uh, if you notice, in the uh, first verses, he spoke of 
some brethren there, but they were not usable material. Why? Because the church is divine and they had not yet been made partaker of the divine nature. We have a serious dilemma today. And people are almost going to despair trying to find an answer. Well, they want the pattern is clear before us. Now, uh, it did not work trying to build with unusable materials in, and it will not work now. Amen. One of the greatest events, as we said, in the history of the world is the establishment of God's true church. Thank the Lord. All down through the Bible, all of the events we find concerning spirituality pointed toward the church of God. Amen. And the apostle was saying, we've got to be careful how we build and the material that we use to build. He said, now here, he said, everything in the world hinges on the material that you use. Paul had an awareness that I trust God, we awakens ourselves to. Paul said, now, if we are going to build a church of God, you don't just grab anything, untempered martyr and everything, and try to build it. It won't work. Amen. Like men build hay, wood, and stubble, it won't work. God help us to sense this today. Now, we are in a time, this is, this is the dilemma of the church. We're living in a time where there is such a scarcity of material, we just grab whatever is available and try to build a church of God. It won't work. They want it will not work. That's why we have so many dead, cold, unproductive, Churches and congregations over the land. What? They are trying to build with unusable material and it just won't work. They might be astute. They might be educated. They might have knowledge of the scripture. But more than that is required to build a church of God. And unless we get back to some basics here. And in many instances tear down some of the things that have been erected wrongly. And with untempered martyr and start from the foundation there's no hope of a church of God of a New Testament church of God one that's productive one like the pattern all right turn to uh, Luke chapter 24 verse number 48 before you read that I want to get another scripture in Hebrews chapter 11 hold your finger there Hebrews chapter 11, verse number 8. Pray with us and bear with us here. We want to get something over here this morning. 11, 8, Hebrews 11, 8. By faith, Abraham. By faith, Abraham. When he was called to go out into a place. When he was called to go out into a place. Which he should after receive for an inheritance. Which he would after receive for an inheritance. Obeyed. Obeyed. My God, not knowing whither he went, by, what? By faith he, by faith he so in joined promise, in the land of promise, as in a strange, in a strange country, dwelling in tabernacles with, with Isaac and Jacob, and Jacob the heirs with him of the same promise. For he, looked for he looked for a city which had foundations, which had foundations who builder build and, and make us God. My God, there are many people wandering around in the world and they're looking for the same city. They're going to the Methodist and the Catholic and the Baptist, but it didn't work. It's not there. And they are wandering, looking for that same city whose builder and maker is not God. It's God, in fact. The church is divine. Totally divine. Not part man and part God but altogether divine. Yes, but people are trying to make 
carnal weapons work in building a divine structure. God help us. We want to pray they want and pray hard. Abraham was looking for that city. Wait, that on the day of Pentecost, that search was climaxed. But we want to study this morning the characteristics of that building and the material that constituted that building. We want to study close. We, something we need to restudy. Something we need to be reminded of. Now you get this, dear one. We have people who can preach the church in detail. Who can teach it and trace it down through history. From the beginning all the way through. Give you the dates and the times and the events that happened along the way. You can, but you can know all of the theory and not even see the church. You can know all of the theory. You can preach it in detail and know absolutely nothing about the church. Amen. Listen, listen. Do you want it? appalling as clear as Paul pointed this truth out how in the world Paul said we can't build on division and strife and all this kind of thing well how in the world do people feel they can do it today he said that kind of it those people who are involved in strife and clashing of spirits and distant in their attitudes you cannot build on that People are trying to build on those spirits today and they're going into oblivion one after another. God help us not to be victims of that. Amen. They were trying to be the church but they were not the kind of material. And Jesus started them off on the right foot in Luke chapter 24. Verse number, the last two verses to there. Verse number 48. Ye are witnesses of these things. I send the promise of my Father upon you. You tarry, you stay right in Jerusalem. You're good men. You're clean men. But you're not material for the church. You are not material yet. That is before you are workable material. You are in the rough. But before you are workable or usable material to construct God building, you need something further. We cannot use a substitute here. He said, now listen, and I don't want you to go out trying to do a thing, trying to build no church because you're not ready for it. And don't worry about God's call. God can take care of that. Don't get anxious and jump the gun. Now, you stay right here and may God help us. Brother, it is good to you just a skeleton crew than just gather somebody and try to do something in the name of religion. <laughs> You do more harm trying to do the work of the church with carnal people than you do good. You might have a good program and you might be impressive in your, in your outreach, but brother, they'll see something less than the church. Brother, because you are a school teacher, don't mean you're a Sunday school teacher. Amen, brother. Teaching comes from God. And they want... Uh, just gathering someone because we're trying to organize and say, you be a teacher, you be a teacher. It's better just to have one big operation or one big class that gets somebody carnal trying to get them to teach God's people. You can't, if they're carnal, they cannot teach a whole gospel. They cannot teach a whole truth. Why? Because there are some points they're short on and you cannot preach what you're not up to. You cannot teach what you're up to. Even the children, even the children. How are you going to teach children about their mannerisms, about attitude, and you got one? How are you going to teach children obedient, obedient to their parents and you're not obedient to your husband? You understand? You're doing detriment. You're doing detriment. You're doing an injustice to those who are seeking help to try to use a build with unusable material. Brother, I thank God when we got ready to try to establish that little work in Jackson, there were a flock of carnal people there who had taken over the church. And brother, I immediately recognize we can't build a church of God on this. Now, whatever it means that we have to tear it down to the very foundation, we cannot build a church of God on this. Accomplished musician, we cannot build no church of God on this. We'll just go without, we'll sing a cappella. We'll do whatever we have to do. 
Amen. We cannot just do something uh, for the sake of service and just go on and, and browsing over things and just doing something. Brother, unless you got spirit filled people, you'll end up with something less than a church of God. Now, what are your concerns? Now, if you're concerned about the church of God in name and not in spirit, then that's your business. And many people are satisfied themselves. Get this, the one. We are not the only people that teach the one church. The church of Christ is more dogmatic about that than we are. But they know nothing about the church. Absolutely nothing but the letter, the dead cold letter. We can do the same thing. We can preach the church with all zeal we want to and know nothing about it. And produce something less than the church. Use something less than workable material. My God, when God desired to have a church in the earth more than anything. But he said, I can't jump the gun here and just use something here that uh, is unusable material. And these apostles were just raring to go. He said, you just stay right where you are. You have some experience, you have some knowledge, but you do not have that which will make you usable. So you stay right where you are until you be endued with power from on high. Amen. We would do better if we tell people, many instances, you sit right where you are until you get those spirits right. Until you are filled with the power of God that you can be an example in the earth and to the flock. Amen. Rather than getting somebody to con and say, teach these children. You are doing an injustice to the children. To get someone because they have a uh, little experience, uh, 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 spir uh, scriptural knowledge, and say, teach this class. It didn't work then, it won't work now. If you use carnal people, you're going to end up with something less than that which is divine. And the church is all divine. God help us. Now we have to do some reconstructing. We may well get busy and start off on the right foot because we're not going to do anything otherwise. We'll just be there. We'll rot right there with some little carnal organization under the guise church of God. Turn to Revelation chapter 21, please. Verse 1. Now, a new heaven and a new earth. This has nothing to do with any kind of millennium and, and, uh, and, a, and a new kingdom and all this kind of thing. This just means a new order of thing, a new order, a new order. If you look over Isaiah, you'll find that out. We have time we go into it this morning. Because many people confuse this new heaven and a new earth with a millennium and all this kind of thing. It has nothing to do with that at all. Read. Well, the, first the first heaven and the first earth passed were passed away. And there, there was no more sea. I just saw, go on, New Jerusalem. the holy city, New Jerusalem, alright, listen, we know Jerusalem of old was where God's people were, the city of God, the Jews, the Jews, God's chosen people, but now those who are saved and sanctified are the new Jews. Not those who are Jews by nationality, but Jews by spirit. We are spiritual Jews. We are spiritual Israel. And so, since we are the new Jews, we got to have a new Jerusalem to go to. And that new Jerusalem, thank God, is the church of God. I'm a black Jew. Praise the Lord. Come on with it. Come on with it. Read. I just saw the holy city, the new Jerusalem. Thank God the beast came up out of the earth. False religion came up out of the minds of men. But the church came down from heaven. It's divine. Go to God. And if you're part of it, if you're a worker, well, thank God you're divine. That's what we've been preaching about all the week. Trying to make you, amen, know whether or not you are divine. That's why we have to lay judgment down on spirits. Let people know whether they're divine or whether they're carnal. You're, going to, you're not going to have anything but chaos if you get a lot of carnal people trying to operate the church. There's going to be strife, there's going to be division, and you're going to spend all your time trying to have council and caucuses trying to straighten them out. One big glob of commonality. If you have nobody to lead devotion, do it yourself. No carnal person, get up and praise our God. You're poultry another spirit. God can't build on that. God cannot build on that. And God never had been so hard up that he had to use anything as material to build this church. This is divine. It came down from God out of heaven. 
And if we're going to function as a church and prosper as a church, it's going to have to remain that way. My God, all of the material that we dare to use must be usable. Must be usable. And to be usable, it must be of a certain quality. The New, Ch the New Testament church, the early morning church, started the people off on the right foot. Turn to Matthew chapter 16, verse 18. I say also unto thee, that thou art Peter. Thou art Peter. And upon this rock I will build my church. Now the church of God, the church of Christ, rather, the professed, or the so-called church of Christ, try to use this scripture to prove that they are the New Testament church. Yeah. But brother, you got to go further than that to be the New Testament church. You got to get more than one scripture to try to build up us. Let me tell you this too. Brother, the most detrimental thing you can do is to get one isolated passage and try to build a doctrine on it. When you got a hundred other clear scriptures uh, that makes clear the doctrine. Amen! Every group that you know who got one particular point that they hops on one scripture trying to build a doctrine, the, uh, the bottom fall right out. The seven day Adventist, they're going to invariably go the Sabbath. The Jesus on apostolic baptized in Jesus' name. I mean, they are one, trying to build on one scripture. The Bible says in the mouth of two or three witnesses. Let every word be established. Give me two witnesses. Give me two witnesses, praise our God. Read. I say also unto thee, I say also unto thee, thou art Peter. Upon this rock I will build my church. The false religion shall not prevail against it. Thank God when it's divine, that which is human cannot prevail against it. It cannot come against it. Thank God when it's divine, you understand? If you're divine, there's nothing that man can do to you. If you are divine, there's nothing that the world, the flesh, and the devil can do to you. You understand it? That's why you must be divine. Otherwise, the forces of evil, these worldly forces, will overwhelm you. Praise the living God. Read. The gates of hell shall not prevail against it. Shall not prevail against it. Now listen, listen. What rock? That truth. That truth. Let's back up to back up a verse or two. Uh, uh, 1816. Simon Peter answered and said, Who do men say that I am? Peter said, This is the rock. This is the rock that the church was built on. Read. And Simon Peter answered and said, Thou art the Christ. Thou art the Christ. Son of the living God. Of the living God. And Jesus answered and said unto him. Jesus answered and said unto him. This is Jesus' response. Blessed art thou, Simon. Blessed art thou, Simon. Flesh and blood have not... Listen, let me tell you something this morning. You can only see the church in reality by revelation. There is no other way. I don't care how detailed we teach it. You can use a chart. You can use whatever... You can use time elements. You can trace it down through the history. You can only see the church by divine revelation. A lot of people teaching and preaching the church do not see it. And I know they don't. If they saw the church, they would see what constitutes the church. They would know you cannot build a church on division and strife. They would know better than that if they saw the church. But you can have just old dogmatic teaching just like the church of Christ. Because the church of God is the body of Christ and all this kind of stuff. That, that's a cliche. That's, that's just a cliche. It's only the body of Christ when it is constructed out of right material. Thou art flesh and blood has not revealed this unto you. Thank God the church has to come by divine revelation. It's divine. And I can preach till I'm blue in the face trying to tell you all about the church and to what it is and what it is not. Unless God revealed it to you, you'll never see it. You'll never see it. Even in the sixth field, when those brethren were coming from here and there, brother, God would reveal in the church to some a thousand miles away. They saw the same thing. Without having been taught this gospel. They saw it. And they came together. That, that God showed it to me just like we see it here. God showed it to me just like that. And guess what, brother? They had different ideas, different opinions, but when God showed it to them, they came together as one. 
as a unit, as a unit. Thank God, because they came by revelation. They came by revelation. Praise our God. And if you see the church today, you see it because it's been revealed to you. You see it beyond any kind of humanism. The church is not an organization. So it's an or divine organism. And we need to know the difference. Study that. Amen. All right. Peter, upon this divine revelation that you received, I'm going to build my church. On this truth, on this truth concerning Christ. See, uh, a head knowledge of Christ and the church will not prevail. I'm not satisfied with something with a right name and no products. I am persuaded that if we have a church of God, it's going to work in this age and era just like it did to begin with. Because we are claiming to be just a remnant. A remnant is a part of the original. That's all. When you go to the carpet store and say, I want a remnant, you mean I want a part of the original rule. And thank God the Bible speaks of us as a remnant way down in this last age, and we are to be just a part of the original, a part of that which had been acts of the apostle. We are, we are just a continuation of that. And that's why we should be getting the same results, the same manifestations. And it works. It's not a hit and miss thing. It always works. Praise the living God. All right, upon this rock, upon this divine revelation, I say the church is divine and it must be operated by divine people in Acts chapter 6. Begin with verse number 1. And in those days, in those days, the number of the disciples was multiplied all right, we preached on this the other night. There rose a murmuring. I don't care how much Holy Ghost and how usable you are, people are going to murmur. You're going to find somebody there who's going to miss it. And you're going to get something other than which is holy from them. But so now, uh, the Holy Ghost knew that, so he made an antidote. When the number of the disciples were multiplied, read. When the number of the disciples were multiplied, all right. There arose a murmuring. Now, it was seen that the way God was working, the way God was healing, the way God was manifesting himself, nobody would be saying anything negative. It seemed that everybody would have been so excited over the move of God that if things were not just like they wanted, they were just taking it and going on, hoping not to interrupt the work of God. I don't care how ideal things are, somebody's going to find something negative to say about it. Isn't that sad? I don't care how God is manifesting himself, how God is working, somebody's going to find something to negate it. There rose a murmuring. There rose a murmuring. And what, you know what they were murmuring about? A loaf of bread. Come on with it. There arose a murmuring of the Grecians against the Hebrews. Against the Hebrews. Because their widows were neglected in the daily. Their widows were neglected, What? In the daily ministration, the twelve called the multitude of the disciples unto them and said, It is not reason. My God. All right. This is the divine church, brother. Let me tell you this. We're living in a day, dear one. God knows it. Where the demands of the ministry is a such. The condition of the church world is a such. That, brother, we don't have time to do anything but stay before God and get something to feed the people. Oh, my God, help us. Brother, we don't have time for any of the extracurricular activity. But we're not a prof no professionalism here. We are in a battle. And my God, the officers should be there to make the calls. Re attack. Dig in. Amen. The enemy is coming out. Surrounding the camp of the saints with the last great onslaught. Oh, and the generals and the officers should be there to direct the attack of the church to counteract the devil. Amen. We don't have time. To, we don't have time to leave my God. Dear one, let me tell you something. I can see right now enough work in the ministry. That I could preach three times a day until I die. If I, just had the, if I just had the energy and the wherewithal to do it, and it's so needful, and I'm almost trying to do it now. 
Amen. It just that my strength. That's how demanding it is. The battle is almost ended. The battle of Armageddon is almost over. People are still looking for it. The enemy knows he got but a short while. So he's opening, unleashing all that he has, everything in his arsenal. While God's people are sleeping, still trying to live, still trying to feather that nest, still trying to accumulate that which will make life comfortable. And many congregations are going under for the last time. God's people have been bewitched and deceived. Souls are breaking, trying to trust God. Call the multitude of the disciples unto them and say, it is not reason that we should leave the word of God. We have a divine calling. My God, you can, anybody can serve tables. Anybody can do that stuff you all, you, you all need done, but anybody can't preach this gospel. Anybody cannot do the divine operation. We have, many, we have a divine call. We are a divine ministry. We don't have time for that kind of stuff. We don't have time for those secondary efforts here. God help us. We'll get our priorities right. Read. It is not reason that we should leave the word of God. Leave the word of God. My God, at a time when the enemy got this thing by the neck, it is not reason that we leave the word of God and serve tables. Wherefore, brother, look, now listen. Even though the ministry can't do it, but it's still a divine operation. You understand it? It's not just the ministry that to be divine, but the whole operation is to be divine. Get this. Not just the preacher. The people look for the preacher to be divine and get something from heaven. But brother, every last one of you, if I get a divine revelation, you got to be in the spirit to receive it. If God give me a re revelation for you to receive it, you got to be in the spirit. Read. Now, you, I want you to be very, very discriminating here. Now, don't look on their outward appearance or their outward manifestations or, or, or their seeming spiritual uh, involvement, but we want you to be certain that these people that you select are usable material, can do it spiritually. You wouldn't think a menial task like serving tables. Anybody can serve a table. You would think that. I've seen some of the worst confusion in the dining hall anywhere in the world. The sisters get there and they're squabbling. In fact, I remember a uh, meeting in Michigan years ago when I was with the movement. They were, uh, there were sisters down there fixing the dinner and they were arguing about this dish and that dish and, and they had to break up the service, come up there and repent. Carnal people serving tables. They thought just anybody could do that, just stick anybody in the kitchen. That's a secondary task. But brother, everything that pertains to the church is divine. He said, you select you. The people got to be filled with the Holy Ghost just to serve bread. That show you how meticulous the material in the church is to be selected. Amen. Just to teach a few children, just to sing a special, just to play on the instrument. Just to direct the choir. They have a knowledge of music, so why can't they? Not only a divine ministry, my God, if you're going to have a divine church, everybody that functions ought to be divine. We know that there are some people who have not come into it yet, well then they shouldn't be used. We understand that. We understand that. But wait until they are. We wait until they're usable. You're not going to build a church of God upon them. Amen. Read. Men up now, you, you got their, their character. Their character means something here. Honest report. And the Holy Ghost makes you holy. The Holy Ghost makes you divine. And full of the Holy Ghost. Now I'm going to show you something. Now, people often read this passage, but I want you to notice the following verses. Read. Full of the Holy Ghost. Of the Holy Ghost and, wisdom. and wisdom. Now you've got, wait a moment. My God, that's quite a requirement there. Full of the Holy Ghost and wisdom. You've got a lot of people whose lives are clean, but they don't know how to function. They, are const they don't know how to deal with issues. 
All that they know is push the button. Brother, to operate in the church, listen, I know many ministers. I know some of the best ministers that I've known never could do anything in the church. The best preachers I've ever seen. They never could. They, maybe 10 or 15 people and they were up and down. Why? They were good men, clean men, good preachers, but they had no wisdom. They didn't know how to deal with people. All that they knew was one thing. And, you got, and that same spirit is carrying over the day. All that they do is one way to do it. One way to do it. One way to do it. Listen. Even in the home, the Bible says the husband, deal with the wife as a weaker man. You've got to deal with wisdom. You're not going to have any units in the home. Deal with it with wisdom. Not flinging your thoughts around, but with, with, with wisdom. Honor them as a weaker vessel. You claim to be wise, but then use it. Full of the Holy Ghost, full of the Holy Ghost and wisdom. Why? Because otherwise they're going to have confusion and strife and everything else. And there will be no working of God. If you want to see a smooth working group, brother, you be selective in your choices. And I, I don't believe in this pushy stuff. I mean, brother pastor, I want to do something. I want to sing in the choir. Wait, wait until you're chosen. Because we don't want to embarrass you by telling you you're not ready. I want to go on a mission. Well, you're not a missionary. You, you, you're not ready for no mission. Just, just sit down, please. And don't bother me anymore about the matter. And wait until the church. We, we know you. We know you're there. We, we, you've been around for 10 years. We see you. <laughs> we know we're looking. We know you're here. But you're just not usable. So wait until you hear from us. If we need to recall you. <laughs> amen. Amen. Well, it's better to let them sit there until they get something if, if they ever do than let them mess up the whole thing. You know, in the Marine Corps, I went through the hardest ordeal of my whole life about 18 miles from here about 45 years ago. That's when boot camp was almost unbearable and the fellow was losing their minds and committing suicide and everything is what? Because of the pressure, of the pressure. And I just took courage one day and asked the drill instructor, why is all this necessary? This is inhumane. What, what is it? He said, listen, I said, these guys are breaking. They're going crazy. They're, 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 they're uh, drinking poison and they're sticking bayonets in, in themselves, falling on bed. I said, what is this all about? He said, if they're going to break, let them break now. If they're going to break, they won't be usable on the battlefield. They get a whole battalion killed. So if they're going to break, we're going to break them now. If they're going to be usable material, then uh, they need, they'll have to go through this. And at the end of it, if they keep their sanity, they're all right. <laughs> By the same token, you get somebody, praise our God, who looks good and amen and, and out there and, and, and flamboyant on, on, the, on, the, on the parade field and then stick them in some office and they get a whole battalion killed. Whole congregation have been destroyed by using carnal people. All of the, most of the difficulties that we have had, carnal people trying to flout themselves. And many of them won't wait until they're called on, they'll just do it themselves. Many services have been broken down, some carnal person jump up with something out of time and kill a whole service. I've seen it. Come to camp meeting, take the floor, unanointed, speaking out of the anguish and carnality of their own spirits. Visitors turned away, turned off, get a wrong impression of what the church of God is all about because some carnal soul jumped up out of, out of term, out of the spirit. Or someone trying to function who had no spirit of God in, in this sort of manifestation. The choir director uh, made a real ugly face because they got out of tune and the people saw it and didn't come back anymore. You need a Holy Ghost filled choir director. <laughs> Amen. Read. Full of the Holy Ghost. Full of the, I mean, fill up to the brim with it. Amen. I mean, to, to running over, praise God. Not with another ghost, but the Holy Ghost. Read. And wisdom. And wisdom. Whom we may appoint over this, we may appoint over this matter. We're going to give ourselves, we're going to give ourselves, listen, that's why we need the whole church spirit field because you can, you'll be no help to the ministry unless you're spirit field. You'll be no relief to me. Amen. I'm going, I got to leave and leave the congregation in the hand of carnal people. There might not be one minister, there might be no minister there. We might just have to leave the congregation in the hand of some good saints. 
But God help us if we leave it in the hand of carnal things that like leave the fox to watch the chickens. <laughs> That's about the extent of it. You have a big pile of feathers when you get back. Read. We to We're going to give ourselves continually to prayer. And the ministry of the word. And the saying please the whole moment. And the, now listen. Now see the Holy Ghost is working. Listen now. There was no squabbling about it. There was no contention there. The saying please the whole multitude. That's, that's divine order. They didn't have to vote. They didn't have to have a special meeting and some I don't agree and how many agree stand to your feet and how many don't go all that kind of stuff. But brother they did it in the spirit. They did it divinely. And the saying uh, pleased the whole multitude. Read. Let me show you some more. Come on with and it. They chose Stephen, a man full of faith. My God, they chose Stephen, a man full of faith. And of the Holy Ghost. And of the Holy Ghost. And Philip. Philip. And Prochorus. And, and Nikaiah. Nikaiah. And Timon. Timon. Go on. And Nicholas. A proselyte of Antioch. Whom, whom they set before, before the apostles. And when they had prayed. And when they had prayed. They all right, they chose them. Say, now we have chosen. What about these? They're in agreement, they're in agreement here. Look at this unity. Now we have made our choice. What about these? We don't have. We don't have to, we're not going to have a vote. But we have done as you instructed. What about these? Oh, that's fine. All right, we're going to approve it, brother. You need the approval of the church. You need the approval. Don't just grab your little bag and run out somewhere. Come, I'm going to preach. I'm going to start in the congregation. You need the approval of the saints. Yes, you do. 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 Why? In fact, it might save your life and even your soul. Yes. We might decide that you're not qualified, and we decide that you better not go. Yes. Many and you all have seen enough examples of young zealous ministers jumping up somebody I'm there somewhere, and the minister, and the minister, brother, I wouldn't go. It's not in your best interest. But they're so full of some kind of spirit. They're so pushed by their own notion that they've just got to go. And in every case that I've ever known what happened, the bottom fell out of them. I've never seen one go anywhere and prosper who went with that kind of spirit who the church did not approve. Brother, I wouldn't want to do a thing. Even before I came out of here, out of here I got, I, I call the saints. Uh, saints, we, there's a proposal here. How do you feel about it? Let's get before God and see if God approves it. I said, listen, if you all can approve it, I fear to take the move. I don't care if I am the pastor. I want the church to approve it. I want the saints of God to back it up. Brother, I want the saints to be able to lay hand on me in approval. Just jump up and get me a little, some little caravan and strike out somewhere. Amen. Well, uh, does the church approve it? Does the saints approve it? Well, then, this is the situation. You really and rightfully should wait for the church to choose you. You should always have some proposal presenting. Lord, let me go here. Lord, let me go there. Well, wait a moment. Now, if we know there's a need, let us decide who's capable and take it before God and let the Holy Ghost approve it. No, we don't need too many volunteers. Praise our God. <laughs> Amen. Because many times they've got a wrong motive. All right, come on with it. Listen to the word. They laid their hands on them. Lay their hands on them. And the word of God increased. Now, listen. Why? Because they got usable material and God honored it. The word of God increased. When you do it God's way, there's always an increase. There's always an increase. Come on with it. And the number of the disciples multiplied. The number of the disciples multiplied. And greatly. And a great company of the priests. Well, my God, everybody getting saved. Why? They did it right. Come on with it. Stephen, full of faith and the power. My God, look here. Suppose they had got somebody carnal. The church never would have received that benefit. Here's Stephen, my God. Listen. One of the deacons, if you please, or whomever, one of the chosen ones. God used him. God does not just give gifts to the preachers. Everybody got a gift of healing, not, not pulpit preachers. Come on. Amen. Those that got the gift of the wisdom, not necessarily preachers. Or, you know what, that's why I reject about maybe three out of every preacher who say I'm called. Why? Because God does not give everybody the same gift. And I know that. Amen. Everybody's not eyes. Amen. So we got too many eyes, we don't need all those eyes. <laughs> We're going to put patches over some of them. <laughs> amen, amen. We don't need, listen, everybody get a call and says, minister, you know that? So I don't, I don't honor that. Why? We need healers, we need wisdom, 
we need other gifts and all they be getting is preachers? Well, I know it's not God. The Bible says God gives men gifts severally as he will. All preachers, all Indians, no, all chiefs and no Indians. <laughs> Went to one congregation with about, maybe about 20 some people and 12 ministers. Amen, amen. Who's going to preach to? <laughs> preaching themselves. <laughs> Just take turn preaching. Practice on the saints. <laughs> amen. Mind fighting over the pulpit. My turn. <laughs> you know, full of faith and power. My God, you know what? Sure, let me tell you something. I'll, I tell all of our young ministers, I say, if you have a clamor for an office, that disqualifies you. Once we were trying to select the pastor, and those guys that put themselves forward, that, that automatically disqualified them. I let my men, I said, if something should happen to me, the worst thing you could do would clamor to be my successor. That would be the worst thing you could do. Why? Because if you put yourself out and the people don't want you, you see, you're in a real situation. See, wait until you're called. And then you have a recourse. If they don't like it, say, well, you called me, you know. <laughs> See, but if you put yourself up, you have no out. Because <laughs> they say, well, I didn't call you in the first place, so get out of here. <laughs> so wait until you call. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Wait until you had to get in the choir. So when you did, see, we asked you to get in the choir, you get up there taking discard notes and fuzzy notes. Yeah. And uh, we could say, wait a minute, he's you, messing up. Well, you, you, you call me. <laughs> I was sitting down singing congregation, and you heard me discarding out there. So you called me, so here I am. <laughs> and I kind of like it here. <laughs> Now you got a situation <laughs> because you didn't obey the word of God. Stephen, full of faith and power, did great wonders and miracles among the people. Why? Because they followed divine order. They, they chose usable material. Come on! Do you see the significance of usable material? Suppose they just had randomly selected somebody or some influential brethren who's carnal. Or somebody because of their, their uh, seniority. Or because of their financial advantage. Or any other reason. Then the reason designated, look what you would have had. Or your cousins. You know, amen. They got this thing about uh, pastors uh, uh, and the, the man and his wife. You know, pastors, nothing. Amen. If God called a man to be the pastor, the wife ain't no pastor. Not the assistant pastor. And, let me, and your son either. Right. Just about every, all these churches I mean, are going off in apostasy. What? The son necessarily succeeds the daddy. God called the daddy and he didn't necessarily call the son. And he didn't call the son to be their successor. What the Holy Ghost going to say about it? You're going gonna, to gonna award the pastor uh, your successor to your son. Whether God called him or not, he's going to have an automatic call just because you going out to see him. Ain't no God in that. And it, and, it, and it doesn't work. It doesn't work. It does, your son does not inherit anything. Amen. Not in the kingdom. If God doesn't give it to him, he doesn't have a right to it. And, many, and the congregation, they are loyal to the, to the past, to the man, to the father, so they'll automatically accept the son whether they want him or not. Isn't that sad? And they'll sit there and just endure him. And eat their, their leftover, that garbage that they're feeding him. It's a serious matter. It's a serious matter. No divine leadership. All over the land, we've had that kind of thing. If, if, if a minister got a son that claimed to be a preacher, he's going to ne be that necessary successor. Because that ain't man rule, I've never seen it. All this pastoral authority, all this kind of man rule stuff. The Holy, the Holy Ghost have nothing to say about it. The Holy Ghost can't direct it. What? Because pastoral authority. Pastoral authority. They tell you what they do. They tell you the circumstances in which you can do it. Amen! Amen. That's not the way they did it in the New Testament. When we need to follow New Testament order, dear ones. Otherwise, you'll have no success. And got usable material. But mainly, you should make sure that you are usable material. Turn to Acts chapter what, 13, I believe it is. Verse number 2. They ministered unto the Lord. They ministered unto the Lord. And fasted. And fasted. Do you see the one? Divine. My God, help us to follow divine order. They did what? As they ministered to the Lord. 
Listen. And fasted. And fasted. The Holy Ghost said. Holy Ghost said. Separate me, Barnabas. My God have mercy. The Holy Ghost said it's divine. Brother, when you go anywhere on a mission or whatever, the Holy Ghost ought to say it. The saints to see the seriousness of the matter. Get before God with fasting and prayer and let God speak. Let God make the assignment. I'm not going to be so eager to respond. Let, let the Holy Ghost speak. Give the Holy Ghost time to speak. Let the Holy Ghost. Come on! I'm going to tell you this, dear one. You'll never be satisfied until you're certain the Holy Ghost said it. You'll never be satisfied. The devil is going to buff you to death. You know why? Because you're going to always wonder whether I should be there or not. You're going to wonder whether I'm a displaced individual. Come on! You'll never be satisfied. You'll never be satisfied. It's not going to work. Brother, the only reason I'm where I am today, brother, because all of the stuff that I went through, the devil would have defeated me, what? But I knew the Holy Ghost said it. And when I went through deep spots, hard spots, black spots, my consolation was the Holy Ghost said it. Brother, you got preachers that, yes, I'm tempted raping that right now, maybe. Maybe get my little uh, pension and move on down to Florida and get away from that Michigan snow and stuff. But the Holy Ghost didn't say it. And I might go down there and have a sunstroke. To try, to be, <laughs> try to get away from the frost and get sunstroke. Because the Holy Ghost didn't say it. I right, away with this idea because you're retired now and you're going to move to Florida. Or, or Sunny Cal. <laughs> and the Holy Ghost didn't say it. Amen. Amen. Yes, those thoughts, those thoughts are quite tempting. Yes, they are too. I worked hard and labored hard now. I mean, give me a break. Let me go off this thing in, in, on, 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 on Ivory Couch. <laughs> but the Holy Ghost didn't say it. That's the only problem. And I don't care where I go. I don't care where I go or what the situation. I can go and try to build a new church. But if the Holy Ghost didn't say it, I'm not going anywhere. Amen. I don't want to be too graphic here because it might be offensive to some of you. But some of the best ministers that I knew mess around and move I don't think the Holy Ghost had nothing to do with it because maybe a favorable weather condition and some of the strongest men have ever flopped. They flopped. You cannot use expediency as an excuse to do anything if you're a minister of the gospel because the things seem to be more lucrative, the conditions seem to be more favorable because we had one brother from a certain state from the islands, living in a certain state, and his wife insisted that we go to another place where the weather was not more favorable, and, and so uh, the brother insisted to go because his wife insisted. And, I, and so the pastor said, Brother Hampton says, I can't see that. What do you think about it? I said, definitely not. This is a minister. He cannot be going to the whims of his wife. And so what he pulled up and he moved. And he'd been shifted to and fro ever since and end up in a mess. I said, man, you can't do that. You're a minister of the gospel. What is the Holy Ghost saying? Your wife is not the Holy Ghost. She may have a ghost, but she's not the Holy Ghost. And if you keep messing with her, you're going to be a ghost. <laughs> that's that better what he is now, too. He may just as pale as he can be. Praise God. Read. Ministered to the Lord and fasted. The Holy Ghost, the Holy Ghost said, Separate, Separate me, Barnabas, and Saul for the work wherein to I've called them. Thank God I called them. Amen. And I want you to listen. And if the Holy Ghost called you, all the devil in hell cannot defeat you or stop you. They can't stop your prosperity. I don't care who will raise themselves against you. Every weapon formed against you, thank God, will not prosper. If God called you, Amen. that's your security, that's your badge. That's your success. Thank God if God called you. You had to worry about, listen, how many children you got and who gonna, how you going to send them to school? You had to worry about that. You had to worry about what's going to happen if this or that project yourself. You don't have to worry about that. You don't have to worry about the conditions around where you, if God called you, then you're going to have success. And the Holy Ghost said, he sees before you go. He knows what lies ahead. And he gives the success. Prosperity is in him, right, not in conditions, right. not in your ability, not in your 
organizing ability, but in God and in the Word of God and in obedience to the Holy Ghost. What, read that again, please. Brother, I've learned some things. I'm, I'm praying right now, right now, hard. I said, Lord, I don't want to fool around here and, and get tricked in my last days because I have a fairly feathered nest and quite a lucrative congregation and all this kind of thing and able to take care of my needs and get caught up here and, and God called me to something else and I'm tied up and bound up here and can't hear the voice of God. I use a ulterior reason to remain. I said, whatever the case might be, if I'm sure that you said it, I'm ready, Lord. I, I said, whatever, whatever the situation, I know that I'm now uh, uh, advancing in age and all this kind of thing, but I don't care. Because I know unless I'm under the cloud, I'm not going to prosper anyway. If I'm in Jack and the Holy Ghost is here, I mean, I'm not going to prosper. And if I go here and it's supposed to be in Jackson, I'm not going to prosper. So I've got to be right. I've got to be right. Brother, even before I go into revival, I get before God and have the saints crying and praying before God. Why? Because I don't want to be a displaced person. I don't want to be at the wrong place at the wrong time. I don't care what I do. If I'm at the wrong place at the wrong time, God's not with me. I'm just doing something. I might seem to have some success, but it won't be of God. Amen. Read. They ministered to the Lord and fasted. The Holy Ghost said. The Holy Ghost said. The Holy Ghost designated who he wanted. The Holy, it's many times we are so eager, we don't give the Holy Ghost time to say. You accept it before the Holy Ghost can speak. I got a burden. I got the message. Well, wait a minute, what's the Holy Ghost saying here? And the poor person with the message, he didn't have a chance. The Holy Ghost didn't have a chance to point out the, mes the messenger for the day, for the hour. What? You, 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 you know, you are uh, an eager beaver. So you jumped up in our God and, 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 and want to say what you got to say. And stifle what the Holy Ghost said. And, and the Holy Ghost is very distinct too. He's very distinct. He's a separate me who? Barnabas, Barnabas and, Paul. and Paul. For the work. For the work. Why? The Holy Ghost knows your capabilities and he knows where you can handle the work. Amen. Brother, when we went to Jackson, it was a burn over field. The church been there since 1918, never done a thing, but we dared to go because the Holy Ghost said it. Because the Holy Ghost said it. The Holy Ghost knows. Brother, that convinced me and put a fear in my heart never to make any move unless I'm sure you'll you get discouraged. Yes, you will. See, I, I've had ministers and known them, friends, and when I went out, and they just got discouraged. Brother, that well, when, when do I expect some success here? When do I expect it? Well, I don't know. Did the Holy Ghost say it in the first place? Maybe you have no right to, uh, to, uh, to expect success. Maybe you're just out there on your own. I don't know. I can't promise you a thing. I'm not the Holy Ghost. I can only assure you it's success when you are in God's order. When the Holy Ghost says, separate me. Amen! Now you mark it down, dear one. You don't use an ulterior reason. Well, uh, my children are not doing too well, so I think I'm going to take them to another location. Wow. Amen. You're going to let your children direct your ministry. Wow. Wow. Are you here another? Well, the economy here, here is not too well. In fact, the minister that succeeded me, he quit because of the economy. They couldn't pay him. And so he left. My God, help us out here. Well, brother, we had to live. Well, God, help us. This is a thing of faith. This is not a thing of sight. We don't go on conditions and, and uh, where we have some prosperous saints and where the economy is good. Amen. This thing work according to the word of God when we do it according to the word of God. The Holy Ghost says, separate me, Paul and Barnabas. And I don't care, dear one, let me tell you this. I constantly remind our saints they're talking about a, a selecting pastor. You better make sure the Holy Ghost said it. Because if you're going to have a chaos, you're going to have a mess. And I say, and, but then, well, maybe you can help point a successor. Listen, I, I might help to guide you and give you some guidelines, but I'm not appointing anything. 
It's not my job. It's the Holy Ghost job. You know, I might I might do it because I favor somebody. Amen. Because for whatever, because amen, it might be my distant relative, anything else. We got to go uh, precisely by the Holy Ghost. Amen. What do you say? Separate me, Barnabas and Saul, for the work where I should call them. When they had fasted and prayed, lay their hands on them, which means the Bible lay hands on no man. That laying on of hand means approval, divine approval. The Bible be not partake of other men's sins. Then God, if you mess around and prove somebody who's not just right, you be partake of what they're doing. And they being sent forth by the Holy Ghost, departed unto Seleucia, and from thence they fell to Cyprus. When they were, as, the, as you went on, and, uh, and you find where Paul and those, they met situation that they could not have dealt with otherwise. Because they were in God's order, God gave them the power and the authority that they needed to accomplish his job. They met elements of sorcery down there who tried to divert the work of God, but they were under the anointing. And Paul called down blindness. Paul had the authority. Paul had the backing of God. And God helped us that we get in the way of the Holy Ghost. Why? They were in God's order. You're going to meet some things that you cannot deal with it with human strength. You're going to meet some problems that you cannot solve with human wisdom. I'm telling you this. That can arise in a situation that we got a little group, eight or ten people, and splitting up two or three ways. What? Out there trying to solve problem with human wisdom. Not, amen, directed or assigned of God. And now they are steeped with situations that they, that they don't know what, to, what move to make next. They started off wrong. Started off on the wrong foot. You don't just walk in every open door and think it must be God because the door is open. It might be a trap door. Amen. Acts chapter 15. Amen. Listen. A divine church has divine order. Come on. Do things in a divine way and we get divine results. Verse 24. For as much as we have heard that certain which went out from us certain that went out from us have troubled, have troubled you with, you words, with words. Subverting your soul. Subverting your soul. Saying, now here, this was the first threat to the unity of the early morning church. And it was a great big one too. They almost split it down the middle. Yes, they did too. With this, with this circumcision thing. I'm going to show you something, children. Now you get this. It would have been one of the worst messes that you've ever witnessed. But there were those who were under divine auspices dealing with it. We've had split after split after split wipe. Nobody with any divine unction to deal with it. It's not of God. It's, it's definitely not of God. But now here, this is the situation. We better walk lightly before God. And getting people trying to arbitrate the situation, don't know what it's all about. No authority from God, no unction from God. Trying to arbitrate the situation, then you're going to end up in chaos. What did the Bible say? Read. Come on with it. Certain that went out from among you, troubled you with words, subverting your soul, saying you must be circumcised and keep the law. We gave no such command as that. Go on. It seemed good unto us. What? Being one accord. Sent chosen men unto you with our beloved Barnabas. Men that have hazarded their, their lives. We have sent therefore Judas and Silas. Judas and Silas. Who shall also, who shall also tell, tell you the same thing by mouth. For it seemed good, good to the Holy Ghost. Holy Ghost. And to us. My God, when we're dealing with these issues. Can we with authority say it seemed good to the Holy Ghost? Mm -hmm. right. You don't have trouble being heard if you got that authority from God. But if you got man rule, you're going to have mess. Trying to rule people with your, with your power, with your authority, with your position. It seemed good to us in the Holy Ghost. And you know when the Holy Ghost is speaking too. 
If you got the Holy Ghost, you know when the Holy Ghost is speaking. Listen, we all often talk about the six seal unity. But you know they have some of the biggest doctrinal and other problems that you've ever seen and God solved them? Listen, D.S. Warner and E.E. E. Byron, it could have been a split right there, what? E.E. E. Byron teaching divine healing and Warner writing an article recommending a remedy. And he, and he and the Holy Ghost said, Brother, you're crossing my message. And Brother Warner said, Brother, I didn't realize that. My God, I won't do it anymore. Even though he was a leader, he was a big man, but here's a man with the Holy Ghost. He said, Brother, you're crossing my message. I'm teaching divine healing against remedies, and you are recommending remedies here. And because the man was spirit-filled, there was no split, there was no division. God brought it together. You can say, who do you think you are? Praise our God. I, you, you just come lately. I got this thing going. But he wouldn't, uh, authority was not the issue here. Seniority was not the issue here. Rank was not the issue here. The Holy Ghost was the issue. And this big problem here, my God, let me tell you something. You better pray. You better pray hard, children. We're not in something you can just uh, make some little carnal decision and think you've done what's right. And you're going to have the worst mess you've ever seen. It seemed good to us and the Holy Ghost. And brother, when the Holy Ghost is speaking, I don't care who he's speaking to, I'm going to listen. When I recognize that the Holy Ghost, brother, it can be through whomever. Amen, amen. I don't have no set, no chip on my shoulder. My God, that I've already got my mind so set that it don't come from a certain source. I'm not going to listen to it. No, amen. sir. Amen. I'm not so set in anything. Of course, I know truth and I know where to stand, brother. But this idea of my God uh, uh, about uh, getting caucuses and, and uh, all this kind of getting your prearranged plans and making a great big landmark decision by your own little scruples and your little groups and your little cliques and your little clans, all this kind of stuff. And the Holy Ghost is nowhere about it. It seemed good to us and the Holy Ghost. Read. For it seemed good to the Holy Ghost. It seemed good to the Holy Ghost. And love. The Holy Ghost first. And if it's good to the Holy Ghost, it ought to be good to you. Regardless of what it involves. Regardless of how close it cuts you, whatever the case might be. It seemed good to us and the Holy Ghost. Not good to Paul or the chief apostle, but it seemed good to us and the Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost first. The Holy Ghost first! Go on with it. And to us. To lay up upon you no greater burden than these necessary. Now I'm going to show you something here. Now here is the apostolic authority. I'm going to show you something here, children. Now listen, listen. At this time, I'm going to show you something here where you got to, you got to be in the spirit to deal with this thing. You got to be divine. Now, a lot of things we hold as standards today, they didn't bother at that point. They, weren't, they hadn't dealt with jewelry and all this. They dealt with that later. We down the Corinthian church, Paul told about all this jewelry and all this money making by cutting hair and all that. That wasn't the issue then. They didn't bother that. It was not time for that yet. They had an issue here. These were the formative years here. These, listen, the Holy Ghost knows how to lead us through this thing. But you get your little spoonful of wisdom and think you know how it goes and all this kind of stuff, making your little arrangements, you're going to throw it in the tailspin. Later on, he preached it, but they called they because the question arose, and he said, now concerning the thing wherever you wrote unto me. And then they began to write epistles. That's how we know what Jesus taught, because the apostles wrote it in epistles. That's how they got the doctrine. That's how they got the standards from. At this point, he said, we're just going to deal with the necessary thing. We're not going to put anything on you at this point that God's not putting on you. We're going to take it easy, so take it slow. At this point, we got a situation here, and we got to lead you through these troubled waters here. But we got, to, we got to see what God's saying, though. Yeah, Brother, I'm going to tell you something. I stand in awe. I said, Lord, God, these people are waiting to see what I'm coming up with. The, the outcome of all these people will be affected by my decision. here. God, I can't just bring anything to these people. I can't just start throwing switches and, and uh, turning corners and all this kind of thing or, and following my own will, my own ideas. All these people. I have an awesome responsibility here. I, mean, I got to see what God is saying. Otherwise, I, I just can't, I will say nothing. Amen. If God doesn't speak, I'm going to be silent. And I wait until he does. It's too serious Amen. to deal with my fancies and my whims. It's too serious. Amen. The timing element. Something they could have written about. That I'm sure it was needful, but not, that wasn't the time for it. It was always God's will for uh, the male and the female to be distinctly different. The, men, the women have long hair and the men have short hair. That's always been a standard. But they didn't deal with it then. 
This is a tremendous thing, children. Brother, in the church of God, it's different. We are in the mess and apostasy and everything else because men mishandle. They don't know how to handle the work of God. They are using their human wisdom and their own ideas, and they're getting nowhere but down, going nowhere but down, down, down. And just about every last one of them on the scrap heap. Trying to separate doctrine, trying to separate standards, trying to separate issues and problems. And you get a little caucus in, a little group in, a little group there, and dividing and subdividing. And before they get one issue, here's another split. While they hold the front door, the devil comes in the back door, tears up something else. Why? Nobody seems to know what is good, what is good to the Holy Ghost. Nobody can say with authority what's good for the Holy Ghost, for the most part. God help us here. If we are expecting divine favor, we've got to be in divine order. A lot of these individuals trying to pass the congregation, brother, don't you know that's a divine calling? God gave some pastors and teachers. God gave some. God had to give it to you. You can't pass up congregation. Oh, you can do something that you got wisdom and know how to organize. You can have something. Not talking about something divine. Got a crop of youngsters. That, that's what took the church into apostasy to begin with. I got all those notes from Anderson years ago while they met together trying to solve problems in the corner way, about the college, about the school, and about the standard, and about doctrine, all this kind of stuff. I got, God bless me to get all those notes, and those F.G. Smith, and all those brothers of old, where they met together, and, and, and debating points, and, and what brought this thing down, and what called the split, what called the schism, when God was working so graciously. The devil has always been able to use undivine, unanointed people to tell something that God is doing. And it'll, it'll happen today. It'll happen today. My God, they got together before God and wouldn't say anything until God spoke. Come on! They didn't just make a decision off the top of their head. They wouldn't force back in the corner and just make some decision and, and pull the panic button. They got before God. Lord, we have a serious matter here. And I, I, I can't just use my ideas and my thoughts and just fling around my thought and, and wave my wand and my gaffer here. I got to do what you were saying, Father. And they got before God. And the Holy Ghost spoke. You always speak by God if you're honest. You're going to have to have it because you, you, you're the best. You've never been this way before. Amen. You don't know the turns in the road. Right. Right. We ought to know that by example in the Bible and by history. Amen. Read the history of the church and you'll see all this stuff <laughs> and how it happened. And I'm going to show you how it happened. If you turn to Jude, I'm going to show you just how it happened. God help us out. Oh, no. Hold your finger where you got it. Give me verse number one. I want verse number three. Z give me three, five. J uh, three, number three. Verse Love. three. Beloved, when I gave all diligence, to write unto you, write unto you of, of the common salvation, it was, for me it was need for me to write unto you, and exhort you, exhort you that you should earnestly contend for the faith once delivered unto the saints. Go on. Well, there are men, there it is. <laughs> Had no divine calling, no divine wisdom, no divine unction, not led by the Holy Ghost, they crept in among them. Thank God people without divine unction crept in among us. Got on their belly and crept in. Unnoticed. And that caused their part. That was the first apostasy. Because there was a great let out. They got in among them. And I'm going to show you what happened. My God have mercy. Come on. Read. Uh, for there are certain men crept in unawares. Crept in unawares. Before of old ordained to this condemnation. Ungodly men. Listen, listen. Ungodly church men. Because a man in the street couldn't have gotten in there. It had to be somebody religious. And evidently uh, portraying themselves to be a part of the group. Come on with it. Ungodly men. Ungodly men. All God's grace, God's forgiving. So that's all right. Just do it and go and keep on going. Turn the grace of God into lasciviousness. Said that God covers it, grace covers it. And just keep on going. Lasciviousness, just looseness. Do what you want to do and say the grace of God covers it. That brought the apostasy. Before the days of the apostles ended, the apostasy had set in. And the same thing today, the grace of God has been turned into lasciviousness. God forgive you, so just go and do what you want to do. God forgive you, so just go and do what you want to do. God help us. And all promiscuous spirits among us. 
Like I just, just permit it, do what you want to do. Disregarding the standards of God. This is a tremendous thing we're dealing with, thanks to God, a tremendous thing we're dealing with. That's what caused it in the first place. And it will cause it in every age. When men creep in, my God, and begin to bring in things that God does not approve and turn the grace of God into lasciviousness. For whatever reason it's allowed, it's going to have the same result. Brother, they had this conflict. They got together before God. They sensed the danger of inserting that little human wisdom, that little human idea, that little human thought. They realized, they, I can't speak, I cannot move until I'm sure that God has moved first. And when they testified, it seemed good to the Holy Ghost first. The Holy Ghost first, not, a, not some emotional, just say, God, working on my emotions, get emotional and just jump out there and do something. It seemed good to the Holy Ghost first. Brother, if everybody would take time, my God, and get before God and see what the Holy Ghost is saying before they exercise that little spoonful of wisdom and their little ideas. How different, my God, would marriages and homes be today if people that they seem good to the Holy Ghost that we get together. You look good and your dimensions are uh, devastating, but... The Holy Ghost. <laughs> Amen. I, they, 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 that seemed good, but, but that might not seem good to the Holy Ghost. I'm not messing with you. I'm in every phase of life, in every phase of life. My God, these are, let's forget prophecy and theory for the moment here and see what the Holy Ghost is saying. 